shows and the days leading to it. Uh, Mr. Kevin Carter is is married to his beautiful wife, Nicole Carter, and um, he's on his honeymoon right now, and and I was a part of the ceremonies and, and the festivities that took part in Jacksonville, and I um, want to say congratulations to him and his family, and, and I wish him and Nicole the best and nothing but happiness going forward. It was awesome seeing those two in their union as they go forward in this journey of their matrimony. And I couldn't be more proud of Kevin because I know some of the things he went to to get to the happiness that he is at now. And to see the happiness on his face the whole time leading up to the wedding. Y'all know Kevin, he's very, um, wants to be in control. But like I told him, I said, when it comes to weddings, at least the, far, the few that I have been a part of, and um, things never go 1% to plan. But the main thing is, is that as long as you see the person that you want to be for the rest of your life and, and you both share each other vows and have your closest friend, family and friends there and say the words I do and and you do forever so nonetheless congrats Mr. Kevin Carter I will be holding down the podcast over the next few episodes and try to get some guests for the NBA preview and we'll go from there um, so come speaking of I I myself on Twitter has became a celebrity overnight <laughs> So if you already know in the news about this whole NBA and China spat with Daryl Morey tweeting his opinions about, you know, the Hong Kong protesters and and how they're fighting for democracy and trying to get away from dictatorship. There's a lot of turmoil going on. There's a lot of opinions flying around and it's a big mess. So. LeBron was asked the question, you know, what's your opinions on this whole China deal? You think, you know, you being the face of the NBA, you try to find a different way to um, to answer the question, or at least um, you knew it was coming, so you probably had time to try to articulate what your answer was going to be. And to kind of paraphrase his answer was, I believe Daryl Morey was uh, uneducated on the project, uh, on, on uneducated on the subject, and was at hand. It's one of those where we should have did a little bit more research before speaking on it. And something I would say is that maybe next time that he should think about what he say and how he approach it and and just I'm I'm really paraphrasing the the the, the quote that he said but it, it seemed very much that something a real generic answer that you could have gave was listen me as an African American man in America I know we deal with social injustice that we got going on and so as far as I I sympathize for the people in Hong Kong and and you know I, I encourage for everybody to listen to each other's size and promote growth and change um, it's something I don't want to talk about right now I just want to talk about basketball and focus on basketball and here and, and trying to better our brand and be a brand ambassador for the sport and where we play basketball at what probably would have been a good answer to probably say to answer the question. LeBron was getting a lot of heat. Um, 
rightfully so, because, I mean, this is a man who's, well, he's my age, and realized that, you know, it, it, it seemed like it was an answer to where we know China's got a lot, a lot of stock and and brand and everything into the NBA where it could affect the bottom line. There's been rumors about this old spat now that the that the salary cap and how it will have implications on the collective bargaining agreement that it can drop 10% affecting the salary cap. So um, endorsements and, and China is threatened to cut off some of the broadcasting rights to to the NBA, so there's 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 a it's just, just a huge mess. Um, the one thing LeBron has is a right to his opinion, and the way it, like I said, the answer sounded like it was just it don't mess up my money line. So, I warn you, don't I I wouldn't insult Daryl Morey's intelligence because he's an intelligent intelligent man. Um, you know, this guy is very into the analytics and trying to implement that into how he run his team, making his decisions and, and everything like that as far as the Houston Rockets. So I felt like you kind of down-talked him. And with this whole NBA's a brotherhood and we try to stick together, kind of threw him under the bus. But... LeBron don't have to speak on social justice if he don't want to. He, he could have answered it, and I'm not. I'm not trying to come at LeBron like that, but I felt like that he could have answered this better, and it was it was poorly poorly uh, executed on his part of of his answer about what's going on there. Um, so nonetheless, I was very vocal about that. You can't tell a man that you know he should be quiet and he shouldn't have to say anything. No, it's his opinion. There are more had his opinion. He's born right to say what he wants to say, just like you wants to say what's going on in our world. I do appreciate you standing up for our African brothers and sisters in the in the, in the states and everywhere else that there is injustice or regardless of whatever. You know, you do good for, in general, for the African American community. You build a school back in Ohio near your hometown. So, I mean, LeBron, you done more good than bad, but this was a bad look on your part. So. Everybody got their opinion. They got the right to exercise it, regardless if you agree with it or not. Uh, Darren Morey didn't say something that you particularly agree with, but you can't say that man shouldn't shouldn't have said that, and he should have, you know, researched more. I'm I'm sure Darren Morey has a good hand on his shoulders to figure out what he was going to say beforehand. So, nonetheless, I didn't agree with it. I was very vocal about it on Twitter, and I decided to make a video. <sighs> video that I made was I took a look at I remember Daryl uh, Kevin Harlan had said a quote it was back in early 2000 and I want to say 2011 2012 I can't remember the game exactly but <clears throat> there was yeah it was a playoff they were playing the the Boston Celtics LeBron goes in for the drive and has his monster slam I'm just going to play the clip, and you just tell me what y'all think. So check this out. A Smith screen. Posey will defend. Oh! LeBron James with no regard for human life. <laughs> LeBron James, no regard for human life. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. I I took a video and I found it and decided to go ahead and put this in my movie, cut it up and hashtag it. Well, it's already been said before. Hashtag LeBron James. This video popped up and I was like, you know what? What style is this blowing up? Sometimes I have golden tweets and they don't get blown up. I thought this is pretty well tweet, but you know, I, I, I didn't imagine that, you know, when I woke up the next day that right now the tweet has 2,000 retweets, 2,000 retweets and about 7,000 likes, 146 comments and 
<laughs> I just believe my phone was just blowing up all day from people I don't know, friends, family, just laughing like, what in the world did you come up with? How, how did you come up with this tweet? How did you do this? I'm like, I said, sometimes I strike goal. This was this was pretty damn funny, I must say. Um, Kevin Harden, and, and I think the best ones I saw was never in my lifetime I imagined this saying would be me. That's, that, that goes to show you anything and every day, anything and everything nowadays can result in a meme. <sighs> so that was my look popular to fame for a little bit. I had people coming at my head. You know, I know there are some LeBron, Team LeBrons out there, and, and they stick by their guy. And there were some guys that, girls that enjoyed it and, and had a good laugh and and everything like that. So it felt pretty cool to have my phone blow up for a little bit or something that was pretty funny. So um, I still mean notifications on it. And I think it's pretty pretty funny that I'm still getting notifications on it and surprised that some of the bigger wigs didn't see this song. But who knows? I, I know hey, someone's seen it because it's got about 235,000 views. So people will see the tweet. It's been blowing up. And uh, yeah, so I, I was a celebrity overnight for one day. So it, it felt cool to be popular um, for once. So but nonetheless, I can talk all day about that, and I won't. Um, we're going to focus on a little bit of football. And I'm just going to do my picks, make this real quick, make it real quick and easy. Like I said, we kind of missed the college day. I know there was a lot of college football on, so um, I did see that Wisconsin got upset today against Illinois. Just watching the highlights. Um, it was a field goal that a go ahead field goal that won the game. I guess got done watching the Penn State and Michigan game. Michigan came storming back. Um, they spotted Penn State a twenty one to seven lead going into halftime and Michigan came out in a fury and almost had almost made a almost made a comeback. So that was that was pretty that was a pretty good game. Then I always said it's about Alabama. So Alabama and Tennessee played, and the game was tied 7-7 at the first quarter. And I always say this. It's like the most entertaining part about the Alabama game is always the first quarter. And after that, Alabama just seemed to turn into another gear and just go ahead and just, well, cruise the victory and demolish some teams. But – far as the Tennessee and, and Alabama game, my last score check I saw was like 14-28, and Alabama was winning. I just figured I was going to turn it on because I saw it was close again. And Once I saw Alabama score, I was like, yeah, I ain't going to pay my no attention to it. So, But really other than that, I didn't watch too much college football because I was driving back now from Jacksonville for Kevin Wentz. So let's see what we got for us the NFL now. The NFL game that we had on Thursday was – the Chiefs and the Broncos. Um, that was a little rough to watch. The Broncos ended up losing six. Our Chiefs won thirty to six. Patrick Mahomes went down with a knee injury, and Matt Moore came in and pretty much they picked right back where they left off at and end up cruising the victory. Tyreek Hill had a Nice little uh, run route, go route to catch a touchdown and kind of put it out of, out of his way. A lot of the Denver fans and players and, and staff was very, very critical about this loss. You lose that bad at home. Um, usually these Chiefs and Broncos game the last few years has been kind of close. I know the Chiefs have been winning been on the win streak against the Broncos, but they're usually very more competitive than what this game was on Thursday. But to still come out here and and, and have that kind of showing. And Patrick Mahomes went down with the knee.